The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of Velveeta, the famous pasteurized processed cheese food that tastes so good and is so good for you. Yes, Velveeta is another of the Kraft family of fine foods, food you can depend on for delicious eating, for wholesome, healthy eating. So remember, to get the cheese food of quality, get Velveeta, the cheese food that's made by Kraft. Besides the appearance of the first robin, there are other harbingers of spring. This morning, buds are beginning to pop out on the trees. Housewives are beginning to pop out of houses to shake dust mops. Even the great Gildersleeve pops out to get the morning paper instead of sending Leroy. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Ah, dry, George. This spring air is a real tonic. Yeah, listen to the birds sing. Hello, little birdie. Little birdie. You call me, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah. <laughs> no, birdie, I was just talking to a real birdie. Okay, that's call birdie. Yeah, let's see what the weatherman says in the paper. Uh, fair and warmer. Rising temperature. Yes, indeed, spring is here. <laughs> There's Mrs. Thomas carrying her rugs out. Yes, she's doing her spring house cleaning. Good morning, Mrs. Thomas. Oop. She ducked back in the house. Guess she didn't want me to see her wearing a dust cap. Yeah, women are certainly vain. Say, I think I'll dress up this morning. You might as well wear my lightweight suit. Yeah, it must be here in the hall closet. I don't think I ever took it upstairs when the cleaner brought it back last fall. Hi, huh? Oh, good morning, Leroy. What are you looking for, Easter eggs? Looking for my lightweight suit, my boy. It's going to be a warm day. What's this? It's a card table. What's it doing in the clothes closet? Maybe somebody's been playing cards in the closet. <laughs> yes, yes. Can I have the paper, Unc? Yeah, I haven't had a chance to see it myself. You can't read it in that dark closet. Oh, all right. Take it. Thanks. Now, where is my suit? Hat boxes, floor lamp, broken umbrella, everything in the clothes closet except clothes. Birdie! You called me this time, are you still talking to the bird? <laughs> I'm calling you, Birdie. Yes, sir? I've been having quite a time trying to find my light suit in this closet. There, I took that suit upstairs. Oh, well, as long as I know where it is. Yes, sir. It would be pretty hard to find in there, though. Yes, sir. The closet's pretty full, Bertie. Yes, sir. Perhaps a few of these things could go to the attic. Oh, the attic's full. Well, uh, the basement? The basement's loaded. Oh? Uh, Bertie, I, I couldn't help noticing that Mrs. Thomas is spring house cleaning this morning. Yes, sir. Bertie's planning on doing that right after Easter. Uh-huh. There are a lot of things here that could be thrown away. Yes, sir. Maybe I can get to it this week. You, well, things are accumulating, Bertie. We ought to clean house. You want me to start before breakfast? No, no. No, I'm not pushing you, Bertie. It's just that a lot of these old things could go. <laughs> I want to get rid of a lot of things around this house, too, but you're more the you-never-know-when-you-might-want-it-later type. What's this, Bertie? Oh, Mr. Gilsey, if you don't mind, I'm going to take a few pot shots. <laughs> well, go right ahead. You know me, agreeable Gildersleeve. Yes, sir. When you and Judge Hooker got through playing pinochle that night, who said Bertie put the, clothes, uh, the card table in the clothes closet? You well. Bullseye. And when I go throw away that old broken umbrella, who said, hold it, Bertie, I had that fixed. Oh, yes, but... Bullseye. And then there was your empty hat box. Yeah, all right, Bertie. Bullseye. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hi, Unc. Hello, 
Leroy. Did you have a good day at the school? Don't mention school. I'm doing my homework. Out here in the porch? Bertie's house cleaning. I'm not going in there and get run over. Well, good for Bertie. Let's go in and take a look. Gonna sing all night. Gonna sing all day. Even look guilty. Hello, Bertie. Seem to be in high spirits after such a big day's work. Oh, yes, sir. When you accomplish a lot, you feel good, and Bertie's accomplished a lot. Well, everything looks spick and span. Yes, sir. Take a look in that closet. Say, now that you've cleaned it out, it looks like an extra room. Yes, sir. Wait till you see the rest of the house. What about dinner? You won't recognize the upstairs. Well, the parlor looks great. What about dinner? I cleaned out the attic, and I cleaned out your room, and I cleaned out Leroy's. Speaking of Leroy, how about dinner? Hey. Oh, we're going to have a big one, Leroy. Keen. Now, would you care to take a look in the garage? Is that where we're going to eat? <laughs> no, Leroy. That's where I put all the stuff we're throwing away. Oh, there's a lot of it? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Gilsey. We got an accumulation of years. I just piled it all together for the city rubbish collector. Oh, fine, Bertie, fine. Yeah, we don't realize how many things we keep that we don't need until we start cleaning house. No, sir. Hmm. Look at that pile. Hey, did we have all that in the house? In the house, in the attic, and in the basement. Well, you certainly did a wonderful job, Bertie. You certainly did... Say, is that my old pair of hip boots? Yes, sir. They've got holes in the bottom. Well, I'm going to vulcanize them one of these days. I better pull them out and set them aside. Yes, sir. Hey, Unc, when you move the pile, didn't I see that old cuckoo clock Mr. Munson gave me? Is that thing still around? Leroy, that's the most cuckoo-less clock I ever saw. It won't even cuckoo. Yeah. That's right, Leroy. Just leave it where it is. Oh, heck no, I want to hang up in my room. I like birds around. <laughs> now, Leroy, Bertie's worked hard all day clearing out. And I think... She... Say, isn't that Aunt Hattie's dress for him? Yes, sir, but a trunk fell on it. There ain't nobody got a figure like that. <laughs> No, but it still reminds me of Aunt Hattie. Yeah, I'd better set it aside in case she comes for a visit. Yes, sir. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello, Miss Marjorie. Hi, Marjorie. Hello, my dear. What's going on out here? Uh, Bertie cleaned house today. I ain't so sure. Bertie was told to clean the house, but I ain't so sure it's going to stay that way. Well, now, Bertie, there are a few things we want to say. Oh, Wonky, throw those old relics away after Bertie spent all day... Bertie? Yes, ma'am? Aren't those my old ice skates? Yes, ma'am. They've been hanging in the attic. Well, I have to keep these. Would you mind putting them back in the attic, Bertie? We don't have room over to our house. Yes, ma'am. I mean, no, ma'am. Say, I don't want this fancy vest to go. They're coming back. Hey, here's some track to my old electric train. Leroy, you don't want that besides your uncle. Isn't it exciting? Here's that Cupid doll lamp bronco one throwing baseballs. Oh, we have to keep it. Okay, I'll put it back in the basement, but your uncle told well, me Well, what do you know? My old pipe rack. <laughs> of course, I haven't smoked a pipe for years, but <laughs> who knows? Bertie never smoked, but she's beginning to smoke now. What's this, Bertie? I said Bertie's beginning to smoke. Pretty upset with the little family. But she's had a hard day. Oh, well. I'll stop in Peavy's and get her a little present. Hello, Peavy. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you? Peavy, let me see some stationery. Very well. We have several boxes here. Oh? Well, let me see what it looks like. 24 envelopes and 24 pieces of writing paper in every box. Uh huh. If you don't ruin an envelope or a piece of paper, you'll come out even. I know, Peavy. Unless you get Gabby. Maybe you'd like some extra paper. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'll take this one with the pretty violets on it. And, uh, are you sure you want violets, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes. Wouldn't you like something a little more masculine, like bluebirds? Or... Peavy, this is a gift for Bertie. She's been wanting some stationery. Oh, well, when she writes, tell Bertie not to forget to use Easter seals. I guess you have some at home. Oh, you bet. I always buy Easter seals to help the crippled children. <laughs> uh, wrap the stationary, Petey. Go around. 
I want to take Bertie something because she's a little upset with us at home. You don't care. She did spring cleaning today and was about to throw a lot of things out of the house. Such as you? It... Well, I wanted to salvage some of the stuff. When you're cleaning house, it can become quite a problem what to keep and what to throw away. Yeah. Leroy wanted to keep some useless trash, and Margie's hanging on to some things that have nothing but sentimental value, and very little of that. I take it your treasures are pretty valuable, hmm? Well, if they weren't valuable, I wouldn't have hauled them back in the house. <laughs> you better take Bertie two boxes of stationery. Uh-oh, here comes one of your girlfriends, Miss Gilson. Well, Grace. Oh, hello, Throckmorton. Good evening, Mr. Peavy. Oh, hello, Miss Tuttle. What can I do for you? Mr. Peavy, we're having a rummage sale at school to raise money for playground equipment. I wonder if you'll put this card in your window announcing it. Hmm, I'd be happy to. A rummage sale, huh? Yes, if you have anything around the house you'd like to donate, Throckmorton. Well, I was just telling Peavy about Bertie cleaning house today, and we might have a few things to contribute. <laughs> Wonderful. How about you, Mr. Peavy? Well, I'll speak to Mrs. Peavy. She's the supply sergeant at our house. <laughs> Thank you. Can you bring your contributions to the school gymnasium before Saturday? Mm, very well. Oh, yes, indeed. You're both wonderful to help. Goodbye. Goodbye, Grace. Goodbye, Miss Tuttle. Right, George Peavy, this has worked out great. I'll take everything I want to get rid of to the rummage sale. Mm, I think I'll take Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> <laughs> what? She might want to buy something. Oh. Well, little family, that's the situation. I knew everybody would be glad to hear about the rummage sale. Well, Bertie sure is. Oh, I think it's a wonderful idea. Yeah, keen. Good. So, Leroy and Marjorie... Bring back all the things you wanted to save, and I'll take them to the school. Yes, sir. Now we're rolling. You're on your way, children. Oh, wait a minute, Unky. What about those silly things you took back to the attic? Silly things? What's so silly about protecting one's possessions? My dear, you're the one who's keeping the stuff you'll never use again. Oh? You and Leroy are just being a little childish about this thing. Whereas my mature nature tells me what to keep. Oh. oh, my goodness. This is becoming ridiculous. Yes. Why don't we just vote on what's to go and what's to stay? Then I'll load the car and, and take it to the sale. Well, it's fine with me, Unky. What about you, Leroy? Sure, I like to vote. Mr. Gilfleeve, I'll keep score on that new stationery you gave me. Oh, fine, Reddy, fine. Yes, sir, this is the practical way to do it. Then everybody will be happy again. Now, why don't we start with some of your things, Leroy? Mine? Your Marjorie. How about something of yours, Unky? Well. I know. Let's vote on what we're going to vote on. <laughs> uh, I can see this is going to take a firm hand. Leroy, we'll start with your cuckoo clock. I know it. All in favor of setting Leroy's cuckoo clock to the rummage sale, say aye. 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 I object. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, us eyes got it. The cuckoo goes. Oh, for corn's sake. No, Leroy, you're outnumbered. I'm out of cuckoo clock. <laughs> All right, now let's take something of Marjorie. But, Unky. How about the twins' old baby carriage? Takes up a lot of room in the basement. You think you're going to use that again, Miss Marjorie? Well. I vote she doesn't use it again. Send it to the rummage sale. <laughs> oh, Leroy. Well, Marjorie, it is a little dilapidated. And we can always get another one. I vote it goes. Me too. I. Oh, all right. Now, let's take another of Leroy's belongings. Now, just a minute. Let's vote on something of yours, Unc. Very good idea. Yes, ma'am. Well? Unc, how about your old canoe? My old canoe? It's just collecting dust up there on the rafters. No, Bertie, it isn't in the way. Well, it's no good. It's had a hole in it. Ever since you tried to stand up in it and wave at a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, I had that canoe repaired. I voted go. I. I. Now, wait a minute. That canoe stays. Then the baby carriage stays. And I keep the cuckoo. All right, all right. You want to be like that, we'll keep everything. I thought this boat was on the level. Well, Bertie... Bertie spends all day cleaning the basement, cleaning the attic, cleaning the closets, cleaning the garage, and then everything stays. No, no. Mr. Gilsley, Bertie was told to throw out the stuff. Now she's throwing up her hands. Yeah, but Bertie... Yes, sir, Bertie spends the day cleaning because she's told to throw out the stuff. Now she's throwing up her hands. Bertie, Mr. please. Mr. Gilsley, do you know who told Bertie to throw out the stuff? Yes, That's Bertie. That's right. Now Bertie's throwing up her hands. <laughs> <laughs> 
Guess I'd better throw everything in the car. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Take shrimp, take rice, take a golden cheese sauce made with Kraft's famous pasteurized processed cheese food, Velveeta, put them all together, and you have one of the most delicious and different main dishes you could want. It's shrimp rice biloxi. Here's how you fix it. In the top of your double boiler, melt a half pound of Velveeta. You'll find that Velveeta melts quickly, perfectly. Now, stir in a quarter of a cup of milk. And when this mixture is smooth... Add a cup and a half of cooked shrimp, cover, and heat. Then when you're ready to serve, you just pour the Velveeta shrimp mixture over four individual rice molds that you've made, and there you have it, shrimp rice biloxi. This is just one of the many wonderful main dishes you can make with Velveeta. Main dishes that are delicious because Velveeta has such a fine, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And main dishes that are nourishing because... Velveeta is rich in vital food values from milk. Why, two ounces of Velveeta, the amount you get in an average serving, gives you more of milk's vital food values than a big eight-ounce glass of milk. Cook with Velveeta often. You'll find it's a special help now during Lent. Get a two-pound loaf from your grocer tomorrow, so you'll have plenty for sandwiches, too. Just be sure you get genuine Velveeta when you buy. It's the finest quality cheese food you can get. Velveeta... Made only by Kraft. Well, there was a minor crisis at the Great Gildersleeves when nobody wanted to part with their old belongings after Bertie had cleaned house. Then Bertie got upset. So the water commissioner decided the best way to smooth things over was to take everything to the rummage sale. Yeah, I think we can put the old canoe on top of the car, Leroy. Okay. Where will I put the paddle, Uncle? Just let it stick out of the window, Marjorie. I sure am glad to see all this stuff go. Oh, happy day. Well, Grace will be delighted, too, when she sees me drive up with all these things. Mr. Gilsey, are you sure you're not wasting your time taking all this to the rummage sale? What's this, Bertie? Some of it's okay for rummage, and some of it's just right for rubbish. I think Bertie's right, Unc. Leroy, what do you know about it? Nothing. I'm just trying to get out of the work of loading and unloading. Yeah, I thought so. Well, you never know what somebody will pick up at a rummage sale. I hope you're right. Bertie don't want it dumped back in her lap. You better shift some of the weight, Unky. The car's leaning to the right. Well, when I get in, it'll even up. <laughs> the old car looks more like a wreck than ever with all this junk on it. Oh, Leroy. Come on, I'll hop in. Okay. Well... We're off. Bye, Marge. Bye. Bye, Marty. <laughs> good bye and good Gosh, how we've been here an hour and nobody's anything. Well, people are still looking around, my boy. Let's not get discouraged so early. Oh, there you are, Throckmorton. Hello, Grace. Hello, Leroy. Hi, Miss Tuttle. I saw you move your things in, but I've been so busy I haven't had a chance to come over. Well, we just took over this corner of the gymnasium. Did Mrs. Pettibone give you a little box to put the money in when you make sales? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. How much do you have in the box so far? How much do you have? Leroy, how much money do we have in the box? You know we haven't sold anything. Oh, well, you might display your things to better advantage, Throckmorton. Well, good idea. Where will I put these three links of stovepipe? Have you thought of the bottom of your reservoir? Grace, somebody can use it. Well, old stovepipe isn't very likely to move at a rummage sale. No, I guess not. Leroy, set the stovepipe aside, and we'll put it back in the car. Okay. Now then, how about featuring my old canoe? You have room in the car for that, too? Well, yes. But... Don't misunderstand me, Throckmorton. I think it's marvelous that you've brought so many items. Oh, you haven't seen them all yet. Over here, we have a collapsible tent. Yeah, it collapses all the time. <laughs> well, I'm sure somebody can use it. 
And here's a baby buggy for twins. That ought to go in a hurry. <laughs> well, Throckmorton, uh, not too many couples have twins. Well, little mother can always put groceries on the other side. I can see you're going to do all right. Oh, excuse me, Mrs. Pettibone wants change again. Yeah, all right, see you later, Grace. Gosh, everybody seems to be selling stuff but us. Yeah, they do. And you're a VIP. You're the water commissioner, and you can't even sell your things at a rummage sale. Well, the trouble is, some of these women, like Mrs. Pettibone, got sneaky and brought down their antiques. I can't expect to compete against them. Well, heck, our stuff is as antique as anybody's. <laughs> Antiquer! <laughs> Goodbye, Gully. I know what I'll do. Yeah? I'll attract some attention by auctioning off something. Pound on the stovepipe there, Leroy. Okay. Right this way. Hurry, hurry. Household valuables being sacrificed. Hey, we're getting a crowd, huh? Yeah, you bet. Here on, folks. Gather around. What am I offered for this fine old mandolin? Go on, make an offer. Well, don't just stand there. What am I bid? Two cents. Three. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Gillis, Leroy. Hi, Mr. Peavy. Do I get the mandolin for two cents? Stop kidding. Where's Mrs. Peavy? She couldn't come, but she gave me ten dollars to buy some things. Ten dollars? Oh, boy. Peavy, you're just the man I want to see. <laughs> you don't change. You look over these fine bargains, Peavy. Tell me what you think you want. I think I want to move on. <laughs> Not unless you want to get tackled. Now, you stick around. No, yeah. man. Peavy, I have a fine desk set here you could buy. Hmm, doesn't look so bad. Oh, it's great. Been around the house for years, and I've never used it. Hey, look at this. Blotter pad, letter opener, inkwell, pen. My, my. Never used it, you think? No, indeed. It's worth at least $10. No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> what? I gave you that set three years ago and only paid a dollar ninety-eight for it. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Gosh, Aunt, what's Bertie going to say when she sees us bring all this stuff back home? Well, Leroy, I wasn't going to stay at that rummage sale and have my possessions ignored. I still have my pride. Yeah. You still have the pride, the canoe, the mandolin, the baby carriage? Well, I won't have them long. Before I left the school, I made a phone call. Yeah? Jake the junk man's coming by the house to make me an offer. Gosh, Unc, you think of everything. Yeah, well, I'm not going to let Bertie have the last laugh on me. Yeah. You just park in front of the house and wait until Jake gets here. Oh, here comes Bertie, Unc. Is that you, Miss Gilfield? Uh, hello, Bertie. When your car drove up, I thought you was a city trash collector. <laughs> no, Bertie. I just came out to tell him Mr. Gilfield sold everything at the rummage sale. Well, I decided not to sell our things down there. I thought I'd sell them to a professional man who knows the value of things. Yes. Hey, Unc, here comes the junk man. Oh? Yeah, just stick around, Bertie. Yes, sir. Unc, the junk man drives a better car than you do. Yes, yes. Uh, you Commissioner Gildersleeve? Uh, yes, I am. I'm Jake. I take it this is the pile of junk? Well, let's not refer to it as junk until we look it over. Well, I uh, can't offer you much. Heck, we'll take anything. Leroy, let me handle this. You've been handling it. Let's not lose him. <laughs> <laughs> Look it over, Jake. That's what I'm doing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, well. Unc, maybe he'll take it if we pay him. <laughs> Young man. Uh, I don't want to be critical, Commissioner, but uh, what's that sticking out the car window? Uh, oh, well, that's a canoe paddle. Amphibious, huh? <laughs> what? Were you trying to row the car home? Huh? <laughs> That's very good. Very good, Jake. Now, what's your best offer? Well, I guess I can go as high as um, 
$135. Yeah, uh, you see, Bertie, I told you these things were valuable. Yes, sir. So. Good. Now then, do we put the canoe and the stuff in your garage? You don't want all of it? I don't want any of it. The offer's for your car. <laughs> This is one of my bad days. The great Gildersleeve will be with us in just 30 seconds. What are you going to have for that fourth meal today? I mean, the late evening snack we all like to indulge in. How about some nice crispy crackers and Velveeta, Kraft's golden pasteurized processed cheese food? Sliced or spread on crackers or bread, Velveeta is delicious with a wonderful, rich, yet mild cheddar flavor. Velveeta gives you a wholesome snack, too, and a digestible one because Velveeta is digestible as milk itself. For perfect snacks, keep stocked with the finest quality cheese food you can buy, Velveeta. face when Jake offered you $135 for your car. <laughs> Leroy, I knew Jake wasn't serious. He's quite a kidder. He was just belittling it so he could make a better deal for our junk. Well, you got $22.50 out of it anyway. Yeah, you bet. Grace will be tickled to death when I give her this much for the playground fund. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just run in with it and then you and I will celebrate and go to a movie. Uh, why don't I just go on to the movie alone? But Leroy, your old uncle's going with you. Now, once you see Miss Tuttle, you won't want to leave. Yes, I will. She'll want to talk about the rummage sale, and I don't want to hear any more about rummage sales. Well, you'll change your mind. Moon's coming up. You can smell the apple blossoms. Ah, it's spring, Unc. That has nothing to do with it. I'd have to hear about that rummage sale. Okay. I'll wait out here. All right. I'll only be a minute. <laughs> Two dollars and fifty cents. Throckmorton, I'm delighted. Good. Well, I have to go. Oh, must you? I'm having dinner alone here in my apartment. Why don't you join me? Uh, no, thanks, Grace. I... Oh, it's such a balmy evening. We could sit out on the terrace where the apple tree is in bloom. Well. A- and there'll, there'll be a moon tonight. Uh, well... Excuse me, Grace. Leroy? Yeah? Run along, my boy. Miss Tuttle and I have to discuss the rummage sale. Ah! <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Mary Lee Robb, Mary Schiff, Herb Vigran, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Good cooks know that the fresher the salad oil, the smoother the French dressing. The fresher the cooking oil, the better the cake. And now Kraft Oil is guaranteed to reach your kitchen as wonderfully fresh as it was the minute it was bottled. That's because Kraft Oil, and only Kraft Oil, is sealed with an airtight vacuum cap. Get Kraft Oil tomorrow with confidence that it's the freshest oil you can buy. Tonight, play You